Welcome, FLM is a Sony Xperia Pro I or One and today I'll show you a couple of tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. So anyway, let's get started with probably one of the most important things for this device, which is the image quality. That's kind of one of its uh, selling points. So let's open up our settings and navigate to display and go to image quality settings, which will give you a couple modes. So we have standard, which is set to default. And then we have creator mode, which will give you the most color accurate image, at least most color accurate that this phone can reproduce. Uh, now, it is, I think, somewhere here stated that it has like sRGB accuracy and stuff like that. So, there's a faithful representation of the uh, creator's uh, intended vision through 4K display and blah blah blah. With okay, it doesn't really actually state that it is color accurate, or at least uh, not like a you know typical thing that you uh, expect, like for instance. 98% sRGB accurate or stuff like that. So it just says uh, faithful reproduction. A, a great, I mean, it's still better than, than standard ones. So that's what I recommend. But in terms of a professional kind of use case scenario, not having a actual rating right here is a little bit of a concerning manner. So yeah. Anyway, let's go to the next one, which is the video enhancer, which is below and I am actually not sure if it, it means that it's enabled right now or that it's disabled. Yeah, I think it's disabled when you enable the creator mode for some odd reason. Uh, but basically what it does is it enhances the image of a video so we can get a kind of like a side-by-side -side comparison in the video. So obviously this one will be the enhanced one. Maybe I can just move it a little bit closer. Maybe that will give you a clearer view of it. But you can clearly see that the image right here looks uh, sharper and uh, has, I believe, like a higher, a higher dynamic range. It just looks overly more more well, sharp. This one seems like it's a movie rather than this one being a recording. So it really depends on really what you're looking for. In my perspective, uh, this image uh, looks similar to what you would expect from like a, a movie. It's a little bit softer, uh, so it's more appealing. It's not as sharp as this one. Um, has a little bit more of a washed out tone to it, but again, that's just how the content was shot. So this one just adds a little bit of uh, well, contrast, possibly saturation and uh, sharpness. That's basically what it does. So if that is something that you don't really care for, then you don't need to use this, obviously. Personally, I would probably stick with the creator mode and uh, have that, that whatever probably off state that it is when you have this enabled. Anyway, let's move on to the next option, which is refresh rate, which for some, uh, again, uh, unknown reason to me is off by default. So let's just navigate here and turn it on. This just gives you a higher refresh rate of the display, basically, meaning that you get much more frames per second on your display when you're doing the same kind of thing. And that will result in, for instance, uh, scrolling up and down in content, making it feel like it's much more smoother and responsive to your touch. And I would consider that to be a massive improvement. It looks really good and highly recommend utilizing this option. Now moving on to the next thing, it's just a dark mode. So right here we have, uh, as it's called, a dark theme. So you can just enable it again in the display section and it is now on. You can also tap on it and you can set it up as a schedule. So it will turn on and off based on the time of day, which uh, I would consider this to actually be the go-to functionality for anybody who wants to use this. And uh, the last thing that I wanted to go into is the sidebar, though here it's called like uh, sense bar or something like that. I don't exactly remember, but it is turned on by default and it's this thing right over here. So you can 
basically double tap it, it will give you a, a guide on it, how to use it the first time around, and there you go, you can now utilize it. And in here you have a couple of applications that you can basically edit, add for a quick access, but let's be honest, this isn't anything like uh, groundbreaking, but what is actually useful is the multi-window. This allows you to set up two applications at the same time, or utilize the ones that are co come well, basically pre-added right here, so we can just select this, and as you can see, it opens up both of them at the same, almost at the same time, and you can use two different apps at the same time with a quick access to them. And you can then also swap to other apps if you want to utilize something else, edit these ones by basically choosing different apps. So this was uh, previously one of the only phones that could do this, uh, where it had like pre-made split screen apps, which was really nice thing, uh, something that I believe every Android should, but nowadays it's actually not a unique feature to this uh, brand because Samsung decided to add it too. And truth be told, actually on Samsung, it works a little bit better. So still, uh, even though some other phone has it, it's still nice to have it here. And if you use this device uh, or use split screen, this is a really easy way to basically get your both apps uh, go in like immediately right away. So you don't have to like fiddle around and go to split screen and add the other app. It just automatically opens both of them up. So anyway, this would conclude all the tweaks and the tricks that I want to share with you. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.